Hey, everybody, Mr. Hayes back. We're formalizing this whole idea of significance tests for proportions. And so coming as no surprise from what you saw in the last video, and which, by the way, the link for that's down below, along with the link for these notes, as well as a place where you can like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Um, help me get to my 300 subscribers. Anyway, um, th three conditions are not really a surprise. We need to have it be random. We need it to have meet the 10% rule. So it's independent, and then we need to also have the normal, uh, make sure it's normal for large counts. All right. Um, so then for two, what are we going to be doing? This is the full significance test setup. Okay. So in order to have a standardized test statistic for z-scores and p-values, we've got our nice little normal curve here. We've got it labeled out nicely here. Now, again, remember that our mean here we're going to use as... Um, p-value that we're actually assuming for the population, the um, null hypothesis that we're testing. Standard deviation is our standard formula for that. And then our z-score, again, nothing super surprising here. p hat minus p divided by our standard deviation, that's going to give us our p-value. We take that p-value, throw it in normal CDF, we check out table A, and as long as that p-value is less than 5%, that is going to be something statistically significant, and it's going to give us convincing evidence about what's going on. If you want to see an interesting piece to this, I'll try to remember the link that's down below. It's a very lengthy part, but um, there was a recent... Um, somebody did a speed run in Minecraft that basically everybody said he was cr too incredibly lucky for. And they actually talk through this to an extreme degree. So if you're fascinated by that, I'll put that a link down below. Um, and you guys can wade through that if you want. Anyway, moving on. Here's the example. We're going to talk about how many students can actually identify the smell of a skunk. So take a swing at this. You've done most of this before. Use this if I, if I, ugh, Use the information up here. Slow down, Mr. Hayes. And we'll talk to you soon so we can check your answers. All right, so they're saying 90% of students um, can identify the, skull, the smell of a skunk. So they do a test, they random sample, ooh, that looks important, of 100 students. Ask them to take away from a bag filled with a skunk smell. 85, 84 are able to correctly identify the smell of a skunk. She would like to know if this is convincing evidence that less than 90%. So this is basically our HA here, and then this up here is going to be H sub O. And again, they're telling us what our alpha value is. If they don't remember, it's going to be 5%. Occasionally, they will ask you for 1%, because let's face it, if you're doing something particularly in medical fields and stuff like that, you really want to have a high bar to make sure everything's going okay. Um, state the appropriate hypothesis and be sure to find the parameter of interest. So our parameter of interest is P is the true proportion of students who can identify the smell of a skunk. Our ugh, null hypothesis <laughs> is 90%. And our alternative hypothesis is that P is less than 90%. All right. So now it says explain why the sample results give some evidence for the alternative hypothesis. Well, our sample is p hat is 84 out of 100, which is 0.84, which at least tells us that we're going down. Okay, so it looks like, all right, well, we're at least on the right track, or at least should say at least Sharon's on the right track. Um, so identify the conditions for performing the significance test. Is it random? It says it's random, so we're going to say random sample of 100 students. 10%, forgot to underline, my apologies. There, try to keep the colors consistent. Um, so this is, again, for independence. 100 is definitely less than one-tenth of all students. And then for normal, 100 is less times 90 is less than 10. And then 100 times 10% is going to give us 10, which is also greater than or equal to 10, so we're okay there. So for calculating out the standard results, Okay, so we know that in this case here, P is going to be um, 90, right? And then our standard deviation for this is going to be, and you're going to go through and you're going to type in 90%, square root of 90 times 10% divided by 100. Nicely, this math turns out really, really nice, and it turns out to be 0 0.03 even. All right, and so that's what I have set up over here. And again, the picture is helpful for a variety of reasons. If nothing else, then you have a definite, clear idea of what you need to be looking for. I need to look for all the numbers less than 86. 
set up my general formula here. And then over here, I'm going to type in, so I have 0.84 divided by 0.9 divided by 0 0.03. Obviously, be careful with that when you're typing it in. And we get a z-score of negative 2. So that is going to give us a p-value of 0 0.0228. All right, so that's going to be there. So now, conclusion time. Because 0 0.0228 is less than 5%, we have convincing evidence that less than 90% of students can identify the smell of a skunk. That's right, tackling the big issues here. In reality, it's just a matter of, you know, it, it's not may not be skunk, it may be something else. But in reality, the big important thing here is that you guys kind of get used to this. And again, it's not that different from stuff that we've already done. All right, this we were doing in the first couple sections. This we played around with before. These we have definitely played around with before with our confidence intervals. We have done z-scores before and found the p-values from that. So now we're just putting it all together and coming up with a conclusion. So anyway, we're gonna wrap this up on the next video, and then you guys are probably gonna take a quick little quiz on this, and then we'll see where it goes from there. I bet you we're gonna do differences of proportions. Anyway, we will talk to you soon. Bye.